Welcome to an introduction to managerial accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this podcast, we shall look at the analysis of financial statements, including balance sheets, income statements, and the statement of cash flows. We will show how horizontal and vertical analysis is applied to balance sheets and income statements, and discuss the importance of looking at both net income and cash flow. The financial statements we need are the balance sheets for the previous two years, the income statements for the previous two years, and the cash flow statement of the previous year. What is the purpose of carrying out analysis, and who is going to be interested in the results? Managers are interested in analysis and comparison because it is one of the ways in which operations are controlled. When targets are set, then analysis and comparison will determine whether they are met and how performance compares with the previous year. Managers are also interested in looking at the financial statements of other businesses, which can include vendors, customers and competitors. Are vendors likely to meet demand? Can customers pay on time? How do the sales compare with competitors? Investors will be looking to assess whether to invest sums of money in a business. Is the business healthy and with a good cash flow? Is the business a cash cow? What are the chances of being paid dividends? We shall start by comparing the balance sheets for the previous two years. Our first exercise is to carry out horizontal analysis. We will look at the assets section first. Horizontal analysis is about carrying out two simple steps. First of all, looking at any change in dollar terms, then looking at the change in terms of a percentage. The first item is cash. Cash decrease from $58,000 to $20,300. A drop of $37,700 which represents a change of 65%. There are a number of questions that could be of interest here, including whether this suggests that the company has a cash flow problem, or whether the amount of cash in the previous year was far too high and represented a resource that could be put to better use. The next line is to compare receivables. Here there has been an increase in receivables of 32,200. The percentage increase is 108%. Receivables have doubled over the year. Given the fall in cash, this increase may represent a problem and managers will be interested to know why monies have not been collected. However, it is important to look at statements in their entirety. Suppose that sales had doubled over the year. What then might you have expected to happen to the receivables figure? There has been a reduction in the amount of goods held as inventory. The reduction is $10,000, which is a reduction of 68% from the previous year. Managers will have agreed targets for the amount of inventory at the end of the year. Investors will be aware that a large value for inventory can represent unsold goods and a potential problem. The next item is prepaid insurance. There has been a small reduction here, and this change will probably be seen as not having any great significance by managers. The total current assets have shown a fall of $15,800, a change of almost 16%. We have identified three areas of significant change, cash, receivables and inventory. There has been an increase in the asset of property, plant and equipment, showing either replacement or investment in new equipment. There has also been an increase in accumulated depreciation. Total assets have shown a slight increase. Now we can take a look at the changes in liabilities and equity. 
There has been a small increase in accounts payable of $3,100, representing a 21% change. And we have a small increase in accrued wages of $600 or 10%. Together with a small increase in taxes payable of $1,500. Overall, there has been an increase of $5,200 in current liabilities. The change in long-term debt shows a significant decrease of $40,000, a 40% change. This could be viewed as a healthy sign for the business. The reduction in long-term debt means that there has been an overall reduction in liabilities for the business. There has been no change in common stock over the year. There has been an increase in retained earnings of $30,000 or 178%. Together with the reduction in long-term debt, this suggests the business is doing well at the moment. In total, stockholders' equity is increased by $30,000, and there is only a small change in total liabilities and equity. Now we shall look at a vertical analysis. For assets, this will show us the percentage of total assets that each item line makes up. Cash was 30% of total assets, but this has now been reduced to only 10%. Managers and investors could well see a figure of 30% as being high, unless there was a particular reason for this. Receivables now form a significant part of assets, at almost 33%. This could be seen as undesirable by investors and managers. This is money that has to be collected from customers. An examination of the makeup of this sum might be useful. How many customers are involved? And are there one or two who comprise most of this amount? Inventory forms only a small amount of total assets, at 2.5% a reduction from the previous year. Prepaid insurance forms only a small part of total assets and is largely insignificant. Total current assets still form a significant part of total assets. Managers and investors could see this as giving potential for greater investment. Property plant and equipment have increased slightly. Depreciation has also increased. Total assets have shown a small decrease. But remember that this is largely due to the change in cash. Now we can apply the same type of analysis to liabilities and equity. There has been a slight increase in current liabilities as a percentage of total liabilities and equity. Total liabilities are reduced due to repayment of long-term debt. Total stockholders' equity is increasing. This would be a good sign for investors. Next, we turn to the income statements for the two years. We start with horizontal analysis and we look at gross profit. Sales have increased by almost 50% and gross profit has increased by a similar percentage. The increase in sales looks healthy. There's also been an increase in income from the operations and no significant increase in overall expenses. Net income has also increased. Now we take a look at vertical analysis of the income statements. Note that this shows that the gross profit as a percentage of sales has actually shown a very small decrease 
but only of the order of around 1%, from 32.5% to 31.2%. Income from operations has shown a slight increase as a percentage of sales. There has been an increase in interest expense, but income before taxes still shows a small increase as a percentage of sales. Net income has increased, but as a percentage of sales it is only a small increase. Finally, a look at the cash flow statement. The net cash from operating activities is $84,175. But note that this section also shows the large increase in receivables. The increase in assets of plant and equipment is shown in the net cash being used for investing activities. The reduction in long-term debt is reflected in financing activities, but note also that a dividend has been paid. Investors will see this as encouraging for investments. Over the year there has been a net decrease in cash, the increase in net income has been used to pay off debt and to pay a dividend, and there has been investment and surplus cash has been reduced. In addition to financial statements there are other important sources of information. Annual reports contain sections that offer more information, often under the heading of managerial discussion. Credit reports from agencies will be useful to provide information about vendors and customers. There are also websites that can provide further information. This ends our podcast on analysing financial statements. Brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.